Wait, no, no. Is is Bird? Wait, is Birdo from two? Birdo is from two. Because you, you must know the weird thing about the Japanese manual to the US manual and yes. the weird flip of. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, all right. Let's cross over that. Okay, all right, let's cross over that. I'm not sure where the he's a man, anybody likes to be called Birdo came from. It might just be the. It's the Japanese manual. Is it the Japanese manual? That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. In is the it Japanese not from manual. the American manual? No, in, in the Japanese manual, like it explicitly states, like, oh yeah, it's Yoshi's uh, boyfriend or something like that. And in the US manual, they just change it, like, it's a girl. It's a girl, Yoshi, fuck off. <laughs> but in the, in like it, that's where it comes from. It's like in the Japanese one, it's like oh, it's Yoshi's boyfriend, and he likes to be called Birdo. It's like I'm fairly uh, sure. I'm not. Right, one hundred, okay. I'm not hundred percent. Are you being attacked by a cat again? Oh no, I was just good in my loins against like prejudice against you know the LGBT community. Okay, it did sound like a cat was putting its claws in. No, he's. he's no, he's, he's been segregated. I do believe that in the original Super Mario Bros. 2 manual, they said Birdo was a he, but he'd like to be called a she. Yeah, it's, it's something Or at like the very least, be called Birdette, something like that. It's, it's a very like that, yeah. vague thing, like when they could still get away with it before people got outraged about I mean, it. I mean, presumably they can still get away with it in Japan, but... It's weird because nowadays people seem to get more outraged about stuff like this than they did in the ages and nights. Yeah, they absolutely do. But I, I mean, it's because I watched a like... film a couple of years ago called Car Wash, and it's branded like, "Oh, Richard Pryor is in this." You know, Richard Pryor, yeah. Oh, come on. Just checking, just checking, and he has like one scene, like for five minutes, but it features like I don't want to say a transgender. But it features a man in women's clothing, and I'm not quite sure if he's meant to be a cross-dresser, but he goes by a female name. So you don't, you don't know if he's like a man in drag, like a transvestite or whatever, but it's... I don't quite know. But it's a man in women's clothing, like, exactly. you don't know. Yeah. So, he was in it, and he was actually quite vocal about telling other black people they don't know prejudice until... They wear his clothes, and I'll say mm -hmm. his clothes only because of the actor portraying him. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken in his or her pronouns, anybody listening to this, I'm trying to be tactful, yeah? Um, so if that came out nowadays, imagine the shit that would get. Yeah, I know. None of this is going to make it in, but... Isn't it? I am... Um the most liberal person that I know in real life. Like, nobody cares more about Hitler's rights than me that I know in real life. Especially in my area of the country. Jesus. But... But in none of this in. I'll leave it. Even me and you have got to be like, oh, we best not say this. Because you're always so scared of reprisals. And, like, that's where we've gone wrong. Because me, cause me and you, I think, we are the progressive left. We are. We are. We absolutely are. And yet, it's, we're scared to go, oh no, this is what we should be saying, because people will be cunts. Like, there's, there's always uh, outliers, there's always people taking things you know, poorly, badly, so shit. or shittily. I hate all that. And the thing is, right, is that, you know, because there's those people that are that mental, and are that gung-ho, they make us look like cunts. Because if they if they're turn, oh, it, it makes me and you, the likes of me and you, it makes us look like the loony left. Like, oh, imagine caring about people's rights. Fuck off. You know, ah, I, I hate it. I, actually, I, I just hate people on both sides who are, like, militant about it. Oh, the, the, the thing is, right, I, I don't know if you're... I, I think you're the same as me, but... Relatively, probably, No, yeah. I mean, I, I think, but... I don't think there's anything to split us apart on this. No, 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 no. I, no I, mean, I, mean, I mean, politically speaking, we definitely are the same, but I mean, I think you're the same as me in the way that you look at the world, in that, like, you would never, and I would never be politically active. Like, I know that you retweet things, and I retweet things, but we both wouldn't, I don't think, if it wasn't for the fact that there was a, a tide against. Like, me, people like me and you, right, we see the world in terms of 
you, you should just be allowed to just go about your business and it don't matter, you know, what colour, what religion, what gender, what sexuality. Just do what you want. Exactly. And, you know, in the end, you'll die and then the world will keep re- live revolving. Live and let live and do whatever the fuck you want just as long as you don't hurt anybody else. I mean, you, we would never... I, I know you do it and I do it. Always retweeting the liberal stuff. Always like, ha ha! Look, here's a think piece about how good liberalism is. But we w- and and then therefore, me and you were seen as, oh, they're the liberal intelligentsia. They they want to try and push the liberal agenda. It's like, well, no, we don't want to push any agenda. What we want is for everyone to just go about their own business and not impinge on each other, and then we can all just fuck off with the political discourse. Yes. Like, I think you're the same as me. Like, you, you would rather not retweet all those articles. No. But you do. Because you have to, because, you know, there are cunts. Exactly, because there's fucking <laughs> assholes on this fucking planet that talk down to people. Like, I think I said this to you before. I'd rather live in a world where people are so sensitive about the stuff I say that I'm like, okay, yeah, okay, maybe I said some dumb shit. Rather than a world where everybody's so condescending and so cunty towards each other that nobody feels at liberty to say these things. I absolutely agree. That, do you know what? Actually, that is a very, very good way of putting it. Because that's the kind of... That's the way of putting it that might get through to the right-wing nutters. Because they're the ones who oh, well, we can't say nothing no more. Say, well, you can say anything you, you, you it, want, but if, you have... Reference if you put it in... If you, if, you, if you put it in those terms, it makes so much more sense. Like, well, no. You can literally say anything as long as you're not being a prick. And even if you're a prick, it doesn't matter because you can ignore things. You just have to realise you acted like a prick. This is I think this might actually be going in at one point. I just have to decide at what point. Well, that's that's for sober Dutch man to decide. Yeah, I hate sober Dutch man. It'd be it'd be it'd be good to set out, you know, the political uh, agenda of the TLDR podcast. It's very weird to have the political discourse at the end because normally we start off with a joke about the political agenda. They 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 they, they assure me on Twitter that they're quite reasonable. Bollocks. <laughs> I didn't say it. I didn't say it. Dutchman said it. Harry fucking at, bollocks. At him. They I'm sure they've Dutch got, sticker. You know, Add Dutch sticker, Add Dutch sticker while you're not the, talking the, bollocks. I once said on Twitter to somebody else, if only the men's rights activists on Twitter did more than just shout angrily on people on Twitter. And for fuck's sake, I had the same couple of people for one week shouting angrily on me on Twitter, saying they didn't shout angrily at me people on Twitter. They sure proved me fucking wrong, because they fucking didn't all they fucking did was call me names and be like oh yeah here's douche man because I call myself <laughs> douche man at that point I'm like oh no that's fucking adult one on one calling me douche man is a great way to convince me of your argument you fucking seeping leaking bag of stoma shit oh douche man I'm very glad you thought that was funny because oh. it's shit Funny though. Right, it's now two hours and 35 minutes we've been recording. And that seems like the ideal time to talk about Breaking Bad. I was about to say, like, see you next time. But, uh... <laughs> I know you were. I know you were. <laughs> <laughs> but I was doing it. Well, how talk committed? About, talk how about committed? Breaking Bad or talk how, how... How committed to this gag are you? Is this the end of the conversation? Is Breaking Bad next time? I really need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and I've got barely any beer left. Is this a gag? Because if, if this is a gag, we just let the audience know. I think just. I ain't, I ain't doing a gag. I'm, I'm genuinely asking. I mean, it, ca- it can be. You could easily edit this to make it a gag. That's Fuck, why I did you know it. what? I, that's why I did it in such a manner. Actual piss break. And then I'm going to find out where I left my Jägermeister. Oh, what? I have a bottle of Jägermeister. But well, I have need... to find out where. Well, Stuart, need... well, actual need... piss break. Well, now you can do some hilarious editing around that conversation and the reveal of the Jägermeister.
I mean, no, now that he's now that he's belched and walked away, he, he probably can't hear me. Maybe he can. I don't know. Maybe he can't hear me, but I don't think he can hear me. And now I can drop in this nugget that he's walking away now, as if he's ah, oh, I belched. I walk away. I, I've needed a shit since we started this motherfucker. I ain't moved. Hopefully, hopefully, when he comes to edit this, he, he'll get this nugget of info, li literal nugget of info. Been sat here like some kind of gypsy. No, I've, lo I've lost my momentum. Bottom line, ah, ah, it was, it, ah, it was funny. It was funny. Eh, 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 eh. Do, you want, do you want some bad news? Like Do you want some bad news? Do you want some bad news? I mean, it's not that bad. Shock me. I need, I need to go piss now. <laughs> now. You know, the second you sit down with you, I'm like, yep, need to go. To be fair, we've been at it for hours. I ain't gone yet. Like, yep, I'm, I'm going now. I'm going right now. Go, go, go. <laughs> yes, I shut the door on my own foot. There's no one to laugh at me. It just sounded funny from a distance. It's like a stumble, stumble. <laughs> Ow! It was I, so good. I, I, hadn't, I hadn't even, I hadn't even put the earphone in, and I could hear you laughing. I was across the room, earphones on the desk, and I could hear the laughter. <sighs> hey, technology. I hate technology. Got all tangled up with my earphones, started to panic. Like, if it wasn't for fucking the fact that batteries have finite life, I would do away with all wires ever, because I can never imagine why the fuck a single little tiny wire is more capable of holding down an entire duvet or a blanket or a pillow or an arm, because it's so tiny and minuscule that why on the fucking earth is it capable of... M Stopping me from pulling my duvet over me because I forgot to put away my phone charger properly. <laughs> it makes me angry. <laughs> Irrationally I, angrily so. I see, I can't relate whatsoever because I always, especially, put my phone charger's wire under the quilt because if you've got a cat, you don't want any exposed wires anywhere ever. And if you can hide that fucker under your quilt, then you're gonna, because. Man, ain't, ain't nothing that little motherfucker likes more than a black wire dangling down. Like, something. Like, fucking something that he hates and he wants dead, basically. Ak akin to a thing that likes to chew on another thing, eh, like a thing. Yes. That's you know, a very accurate simile. You know when there. cats hunt fucking one centimetre thick pieces of licorice in the wild? Yes. Cunt. Because... One centimetre thick licorice pieces are abundant in Western European countries. Well, that's what the cat seems to fucking like. So edit this out. No. <laughs> okay, fine. In, right, fine. In that case, put it at the beginning of an episode then. That would be that would, no, that would be a pretty bit more at the beginning of an episode, won't it? Uh, well, yeah. Or in the middle somewhere. I don't even know how <laughs> I'm going to do this yet. Just do it as a piss... I don't know. To be fair, you've got a lot of work to do on this one. <laughs> it's been very incoherent. We've been going back and forth. There was a bit where we started a conversation. Spent about 20 minutes talking about the losers. So, good luck. So now this is going in. Because now <laughs> we're talking about... Us talking about not being coherent enough to have a conversation. Alright, well, you know, up to you. You're, it's, hey. Stuart, are you drinking anything? Because I've just switched to fucking Jägermeister because I ran out of beer because we've been talking too long. It's, this was going to be a joke, yeah? We're going to be like, every time I would like, oh yeah, what about Breaking Bad? Oh yeah, well, no time left in this one. But fine, let's talk about Breaking Bad and why you so desperately yeah, and, and, want and, to talk about Breaking Bad because and, apparently you don't like Breaking Bad. But and, you do fucking love Blood Drive. And speaking of Breaking Bad, you broke bad by drinking the Jägermeister. How, how dare you, as I think you've just done, 
Try and try try and do the oh you like the trashy bullshit that is Blood Drive, but you don't like break it sounded like you were looking down upon Blood Drive without ever having without ever having seen it. And it's completely different to Breaking Bad. And I'll tell you something now, right? I'll tell you something right now. Yes. The main problem that Breaking Bad had that Blood Drive excels in is Blood Drive tries to be fun. And Breaking Bad... Uh, right, so, Breaking Bad. Being serious. I sincerely stuff. disagree with that before you even Break, get to start. What, what, with the noise Breaking that Bad I made? Just the, I didn't bits. even make a point. Like, Bre- Breaking Bad. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't even a point. It was a noise. No, you didn't even get to start yet because you, you are implying right here that Breaking Bad doesn't try to be fun. There's lots of fun to be had in Breaking Bad. No, 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 no. Breaking Bad is loads of fun at points. And and this has been and always will be my main problem with Breaking Bad. And you can link it back to uh, Sopranos. <sighs> Breaking Bad, when it was good, it was literally the best TV ever made. It was fucking incredible. But... A lot of the time, it wasn't. And I, I don't know if you want to go first and try and convince me that Breaking Bad is the best, or if you want me to go first with my criticisms, but my main problem Breaking Bad is when Breaking Bad was good, it wasn't just good, it was the best. But when it was bad, it was badly made filler for a TV show that was never meant to run that long, that they were clearly extending and had no plot for. I don't adore Breaking Bad to that degree that I feel like I have to combat this but I do think that Breaking yeah. Bad is one of the best shows ever made but I do think that it's spin-off Better Call Saul is like 20,000% better that's odd because most people I know don't like Better Call Saul I, fuck all Call of them. Saul. I assume I would like fuck it fuck all of them I, I assume I'd like it because he was one of my heroes but anyway if you want me to start on Breaking Bad I will so I got into it years after the fact. I watched the first couple of episodes when they first aired in the UK on Fox, and I thought it was okay. Didn't blow me away. It was only after years and years and years. I was living with my housemate actually in 2013, 14, and he loved it, and he absolutely went on about it for those. So, in the end, I acquiesced. I started to watch it on Netflix. And the first episode was all right. And I know a lot of people go on and on about, oh, he ends in his tighty whities and all that. And yeah, it's a good visual, but okay. And then it, the second episode gripped me. And at this point, you may be worried about like, wait, is he going to go on? Is he going to wait each episode up day by day? And I kind of am. I'm not going to break each episode down. But this is what I got from Breaking Bad. This was the experience I had from episode one to the very last episode. Is that one episode, it would grip you. It would absolutely get its hooks into you. And it would fucking drag you in. And then the next episode would be about a car wash. And you wouldn't give a fuck. And it did my head in. And... At a certain point, the thing that drives Breaking Bad is the characters, but yeah. episode one to about episode 30, the only character I liked was Walt. And wow. that's a problem. That is a problem. Uh, like Especially the first few. Like You know when you first introduced to Hank? He's the biggest cunt in the world. Hank is reprehensible. He shouldn't have been. He absolutely should not... By the fifth series, I was turning to my girlfriend and going, I would like this TV show a lot more if it was just about Hank and Steve Gomez as DA agents going around, kicking ass, fighting crime. I wanted to know about fucking Schrader Brow. I, want, I wanted to know how Schrader Brow was doing. All right? Hank brewing his own beer, doing his thing. That is great TV. Hank fucking... Hank was the most interesting character in the whole thing. And don't really agree, but yeah, okay. Apart from, I mean, apart from Walt, uh, um, still don't agree, but okay. Who was more interesting, Hank? You finish first. 
so so the, I, I got off to a bad start with it in series one because I figured that in series one the only interesting character really, well you know, the only likable character was Walt and Walt shouldn't have been likable like I hated Hank because Hank was a big macho prick I hated Jesse because Jesse was fucking reprehensible granted they had to do some weird writing there because he was only maybe in like two episodes and they had to write him back in because Ron Paul was really Im- impressive and all that shit but uh, I didn't like Hank I didn't like Jesse mm-hmm. fucking the, the less about Walt's family the better they're awful all the way through like if, if you're making a thing where the, the goal of the TV show is to make Mr. Rogers becomes Scarface right by the end of that plot I should not hate Scarface's family and I fucking did because Skyler is a piece of shit Hank Jr. is a piece of, uh, sorry Walt Jr. is a piece of shit hated them both fucking hated them wish they died wow Hate what? What you didn't? You didn't hate Skylar and Walt Junior. I think Fox. I think Skylar got more shit than she deserved. I don't at all. She's awful and boring. It's because a lot of people seem to hate her to the degree that they literally wanted the actress to die. That level of hatred. Well, oh, oh, right, right, okay, right. That's mental. But it is mental. But it's like people hated her because she was giving Walt White grief. Because in the end, Walter White was still an asshole, a criminal, and a murderer, and she was still like a relatively normal person. Eh, I don't know because at the point that there are points in that series where she doesn't know the depth of Walt's depravity, and yet she's still so outwardly aggressive towards him. That's the point, though. But she's still a she hates him. She's still a human being. Yeah, but not a nice human being. That's, I don't like her. Okay, that's true. I'm not, I'm not saying you should like her, but it's like... I especially don't like Walt Jr. Walt Jr. I feel the most sympathy towards because... Finn? F- f- Finn? Finn? What? Finn. He calls himself Finn. I don't like him. He's a creep. <laughs> what? Just because he's got fucking cerebral <laughs> no. palsy? Fuck off. He's, he's still an arsehole. I, I never, like I never had anything but about like him, him that made me go like, "Oh, you dick." I, hate him. I mean, it's been a while, but there's loads of character moments I can point to where it's just like, he, he has all these self-righteous moments, right? Where it's like, there's like this weird family intervention bits where Walt's being all like, they're, they're trying to nail it with a wall and they daren't. Like Hank's kind of like, "Oh, it's not really my place," so I don't know. And like Marie's there, but she's only married in, and Scott like. Skyler's trying to nail him and, and like she's like won't anyone support me and Hank's like well like it's not really my place and Marie's like it's not really my place and then it, that's when like Walt Jr. steps up and he's like oh, oh fuck you dad fuck it's like mate he bought you like the most amazing car you've never had to work like Walt Jr. is spoiled rotten and yet he still hates his dad well he's got good reason to but you know D- does he though honestly does he? This is even it outside of the criminal fact that he probably does because... His dad buys him a Corvette. Buying your love doesn't work. Yeah, okay, all right. But but this is not a, uh, not an indictment on the characters. This is an indictment on the TV show. I don't think they do enough to deal with the buying of the storyline. Probably. And this is the problem I have had with writing about all the way through is that I loved the drug stuff. I loved the DEA stuff, the flight to Columbia. All that was just like, nah, this is the best story ever. The times where they tried to deal with Walt's family life were either A, unbelievable, or B, crushingly tedious. It was just... It's probably because it felt like it was distracting you from the actual storyline, which was his drug life. It's not like it felt like it was distracting me from anything. It's that Breaking Bad was a TV show that had one very good idea that they made the guy stretch out over five seasons. He had one good idea, and that was to take Mr. Rogers and make him into Scarface. And they went to him, that's good, get five seasons out of it. And he clearly couldn't. And that is never more apparent in... And the main problem I've got with Breaking Bad is, right, this is the antithesis of The Sopranos, is that... Breaking Bad lives on this. An episode ends with an amazing, either a cliffhanger or a big visual spectacle. When I first started watching it, is it episode two or three where the bath melts through the ceiling? Two. Two. The second that happened, like, I was like, oh my, I am in, I am on board. 
and I watched episodes 3, 4 and 5 immediately and they weren't as good as that one and Breaking Bad suffers with that syndrome forever so it has this one really good moment that draws you in and the next two or three episodes don't quite live up to that moment and you're always wait, waiting for the next big moment and it and eventually it comes but it's not consistent and then three or four seasons in the plot starts to follow that same trajectory as well and it eventually reaches its nadir with, and I riff will jump ahead here but the penultimate episode and I've got a lot to say about stuff that happens before the penultimate episode particularly involving the neo-nazis but the penultimate episode you get yourself on board you're ready for the finale it's like okay here's Walt he's got nothing left to lose he's gonna go and he's gonna fuck him up oh no no he's he's moved to a shack in New England okay and and that for me that was my experience of Breaking Bad it was it was a building of tension 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 and it reaches an idea and, and then and then and then there's no payoff and then and then it builds 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 and and there were so many moments where it built to moments of massive tension and then nothing and it it killed it for me it just absolutely killed the whole series right you have been going on about myself for quite a while. I didn't realise, I didn't realise. <laughs> By all means, edit, edit, edit. No, but I, lo- I love these moments. I love these moments where I have to just shut up and listen to you because you seem to be spending a lot more thought on these things than I do. By all means, pick them apart. I, I want you to pick them apart. Perfectly valid points there. But I think that by the sheer fact of the point you don't always have to build to a climax it's like the entire series was about Walt building up to a point where he could die on his own terms should it have run for five seasons I'm not even sure that was quite the plan because I I think they had issues with the writer's strike between seasons two and three from what I've read it was never meant to run for five seasons it was a combination of the writer's strike and studios putting pressure on them making them stretch it I, I, I've got sympathy I'm just saying like now really the only reason why we're talking about this now is because I wanted your take on why it wasn't that good because it sounded a lot more harsh when you first pitched it to me really? but it did sound like you hated Breaking Bad very much <laughs> <laughs> what, wait, wait, uh, what, what I've just said didn't sound like I hated it. Did it not? No, because you bring up points that are completely valid. Oh, good. Because because I don't. Because I don't. Because... Like, you can discuss them. You can debate them. But they're never ungrounded. So I think you have to consider that for yourself, Stuart. I, I absolutely must stress this, though, is that the bits that I do like about Breaking Bad, I absolutely love. Like there, See, this is what I mean. There are certain parts of that series that will stay with me forever, and I will say it has got the second greatest finale in TV history. The bit where um, Walt is laid on the floor of the meth lab and they start playing Baby Blue by Badfinger, that... Absolutely, it, it almost brought a tear to my eye, and it still. When I hear that song now, it still gets me down deep inside, and that shows that I did have a fucking emotional response to that series. All I'm saying is, it could have been two seasons, and it would have been the, like the best TV show ever made. But they fucking stretch it out for five seasons. Like, you know what? It's, it sounds more like you like the series, but you have serious issues with it. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. That is, that is absolutely it. And do you know what? That's perfectly fine because if you're not able to look at something without giving it a critical eye then you're just being blind and fanboyish yeah to- totally like the-, the thing I've always had with that series is I came to it really late everyone told me it was the best series of all time I came to it and I was like do you know what 6 out of 10 because it- it's highs are literally the highest highs I would say 6 out of 10 because that's really hard <laughs> I would no, it's, it's 6 out of 10. Like, the thing is, right, it, the show is 50-odd episodes long, and it, it, it could have been 16. Okay, so you said you only really like Walter and Hank. No, 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 no. At first... Sorry, I got I got the impression you only really like Walter and Hank. Yeah, yeah, be, yeah because I, I glossed over it really quickly, and I was really angry about oh, it. Oh, that's okay, that's fine, that's fine. But I think 
Jesse Pinkman, from the start, he starts off as a nobody, as a shit, but towards the end, you're rooting for him, I think. Absolutely. He was the big... He was the breakout. My, my, my relationship with that character kind of mirrors my relationship with the series. I'll be honest, it took me about two or three seasons, but eventually I really, really began to root for Jesse Pinkman. I, mean, I, I only knew Ron Paul, sorry, Aaron Paul, from the Xbox 360 adverts. I never knew him, and then in the first couple of episodes he really really got on my nerves but eventually he became like, he was intended to yeah so so the the bit where he really really pushed over the edge and became mad sympathetic and like my favorite character obviously the whole story arc with jane and 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 jesse he goes through this whole period where he, he just gets knocked down and shit on and broken down and uh, and you see a lot of his of his story he, he just gets he just gets beat up for ages not physically but just by life and uh, my biggest point was when they were gonna have the train robbery that was the point for me where it just hit a nerve but he, he went from he went from being annoying comic relief to being this 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 just the most sympathetic character in TV. Like he 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 got everything thrown at him, and he just got up. And this was the thing. I think this is what carried him through: is that he had a moral code, and that is I think one of the most beautiful things that Breaking Bad did do that gets overlooked probably is that it blurred this line between. So he is Walt, who his original starting point is I'm doing it all with my family. I'm doing it all with my family. And you get Jesse who's going, I'm just in for the money, bro. And then by the end of it, Jesse's the one who's like, this is too far, this is all fucked. And Walt is literally willing to do anything. And to be honest, I don't think the TV show represented that in the best way they could have. I, I, there's so many things they could have done. Right, aside from Jesse, yeah. Mike Ehrmantraut. Mm. Oh, Mike. Mike Ehrmantraut. I, it's probably because I'm still on the high of Medical Soul, but Mike Ehrmantraut was my favourite character in the series to begin with. He's not my favourite. Mike is really cool. Uh, the, the missus really loves Mike. Mike's cool. Mike is cool. Mike is cool. Mike is fucking cool. There's an episode in the first season of Better Call Saul, which is all about Mike and his past and his son and mm. both of them being policemen. Okay. That's so good. That's the. I'm going to outright and say it, it made me cry. Wow. And it's such good television. At one point, he says the line, I broke my boy, and it's just, I was sobbing like a little fucking four-year-old. I got, Mike is one of those characters that brings a lot of gravity to the whole series because when you look at jesse and even walt and especially soul like larger than life but mike feels grounded and i mean gus as well but gus is almost too perfect as a villain but mike mike feels grounded every other character feels exaggerated so if you if you get a real moment with mike it's like okay now i'm into it but i'm just saying like i know everyone loved it but for me breaking bad's really unique and it and it, it does it twice. It does it twice. So all the way through five seasons, mind you, it's setting up this thing of what if Hank finds out that Walt is the guy pushing the blue drugs? And then he does find out. And then what happens? Hank dies five episodes before the finale. So so you, you all the way through, you've been expecting this big Hank, Walt. And then, finally, Hank finds out. And then, Hank just dies and then suddenly the nazis are the villains and then uh, and then and then and then even even then even then even then all right so the nazis are villains the nazis are the villains is fine so so walt's gonna take revenge on the nazis but not yet because he's got to go and move to new england for a full episode and do a chemo live in the wilderness then come back yes, then to okay. revenge yes. and, and, and yes that is the finale but but it, it does that so many times I was about to say if that was the finale in itself without any of the prior baggage that you just implied like if he had gone away and then realised he needed the thrill of being such a badass gangster then it would have worked better right yeah. totally, no, totally. I mean I, I get it like I get it. the reason why it goes away then I, compl I completely get what you mean then 
this is probably why Better Call Saul feels better because every season they don't know if they're having a next one so every season feels like it's flying by the edge of their seat yeah 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 that's what Breaking Bad should have been I think I think it, it should have been we're going to make this episode the best rather than having to do filler but you would still like Better Call Saul I guarantee I'm sure because, because Saul was one of my favourite characters Hands down, he was he was the only the only character bar bar Walter White who immediately upon introduction I liked because I, I I hated Jesse and I hated Hank, but over time I grew to like them. But Saul, the second Saul appeared, I was like, all right, okay. Plus, it's got a lot of Mike Omer Trout. Great character, amazing character. I'm very happy he's in it. That, I mean, that makes sense. Uh, Bill Burr. Bill Burr. Bill Burr is he in it? I'm not quite sure who he is. Oh, American comedian Ginger. He's in Breaking Bad. He's one of Saul's dudes. The uh, Huel, the big fat black guy's here. He shows up in season three. Okay, but has he got his Ginger like slapstick partner with him or? No, not yet. Ah, because that's Bill Burr. No, um, big fat black bloke gets used in a thing that Saul does. Oh. They're getting another season, so he might show up next season. He won TV. Uh-huh. Is just blood drive, but. F is for family. Bill Burr's animated sitcom. It's it's basically the modern day King of the Hill. Never heard of that before. F is for family. Great. It's on Netflix. It's into its second season. They're doing the third season at the moment. It's Bill Burr. Bill Burr's coming season. Justin Long is in it. He's the Justin Long you'll know from Dodgeball. It looks F, like yeah. Family Guy done by the people who do Bojack or well, I mean, it's on Netflix, so that's bunch of But nah, it's way better than that. It's the funniest TV show. Like it's it's. I assume you don't know Bill Burr, really. No, I've never heard of him before in my life. One of, if not my favourite, stunt comedian working. Me and the missus went to see him last November in London. He's incredible. So how does a stunt comedian get a sitcom, an uh, animated sitcom? Because he's big news in America. Right. Okay. He's American himself. He's big, big news in America. And what way do you go in America from stand-up, if not to sitcoms? Uh, but he, he, so F is for Family is set in like 1970, right? And Bill Burr, he wrote it and directed it, and he voices the dad, and it's all about how like you know his dad is just furiously angry about everything all the time, you know, like all sitcom dads are. But it's kind of based on Bill's own life as a kid. So it's like Life with Louie. A bit, and like, you know, everyone hates <laughs> And like, everyone hates You didn't even blink, you just said, yeah. <laughs> no, no, but no, but it is a bit. It is honestly a bit. Or like, everyone hates Chris. It's Nobody even those, you know, knows Life with like Louie, but you were like, yeah, sure, okay. I know Life with Louie. Fuck, it was on Fox Kids when I was like 10. Fuck off. I know Life with Louie. Okay, fine. Continue. Big fat Louie. I know. I it's quite, it was my favorite. I didn't say anything. Mm-hmm. Continue. Go ahead. Yeah, Bill, you know, I, 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 you've, ruined it. you've ruined it. Oh, fine. So I'm now the ruiner, am I? Yep. <laughs> to, be, to be fair, the ruiner sounds like a really good Dutch surname. It's Flores de ruiner. <laughs> Crap. You've managed to combine two things, and now I've got nothing to say except for the foot in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing um, clog themed slippers. <laughs> wait, wait, C- clog or clock? Clog, uh, like the wooden shoe. Clog themed slippers. Yeah, you know, like slippers. No, I don't. I, I, my my girlfriend's sister's boyfriend went to Amsterdam last year, and when he came back, he brought back like plushy slippers in the shape of clogs. For all, I've got plushy slippers in the web blogs. I, I can only assume that an English English person bought you those. Nope. Somebody in Holland bought you. I keep saying Holland. Somebody in your homeland. Nope. Someone foreign. I'll I'll make it even worse because I needed new slippers because my previous ones are worn out completely. And then I looked up online like, how do I get slippers so I don't need to go to a shoe store? And then they said, we got these grey ones. I'm like, yeah. And then we got these clog-themed slippers for the same price. I'm like, oh, no. Bye. So, yeah, they're big. They're yellow. they got a red square and a red triangle on them. Why the fuck not? Because why would you have ordinary slippers 
if you could go for a funny comedy gag oh, one. That's my um, end of levity for the recording. That's the I end think. of all levity. Uh, everything from this is going to be like downbeat. Yeah, well, so I think this might be just the best time yeah, to probably. stop recording. It's been, I mean, to be... <laughs> I think it's a good point to end on because we discussed a lot of serious things. Did we? Well, well, we didn't, but there was like very little comedic intervals. Is there ever? Well, there's lots, loads of time. I still cannot believe you have boxed him. I'll, I'll make a photo and I'll, I'll, I'll send you on a Twitter. I'll, I'll send you my feet because you fucking love my feet. I do love feet. So, uh, Stuart? Yes, Florius. Uh, I'm going to say something and you're going to say something in return. What would that be? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? That's a good night from me. Sometimes I only feel happy when I cry myself to sleep. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs>